So we are very happy to have Dan here as our reader. He has a, a special event in his family uh, today, which is the day of his mother's 93rd birthday. So that, that's a special day. His new book, Impulse and Warp, the selected 20th century poems, uh, was out about two months ago, I think. So he's been reading from it, and he's going to read from it tonight. It contains works from his first 13 books, which represents over 26 years of work. His other recent books are Showing Light a Good Time and Breath Test. His poems have appeared in over 300 magazines, websites, and anthologies. And he has done over 200 readings at a whole series of venues, so I'm not going to even attempt a list of the, the venues or the anthologies. He has been arranging poetry readings for almost 40 years, including a monthly series for 13 years in Poetland. So maybe we'll say something about Poetland, which is 80 poets reading in eight venues over an eight-hour stretch. He published NRG Magazine for 17 years. He's edited 26 books, 26 chapbooks of 26 pages by 26 Oregon and Washington poets. <coughs> Living in Portland with his wife Melba and over 400 plant species. He's also interested in politics, reading, hiking, and jazz. 2011 is going to see the release of Children of the Blue Supermarket which is a CD in performance with saxophonist Rich Haley and drummer Carson Haley and the publication of The State I'm In, The State I'm In, a collection of new poems. So would you join me in welcoming our poet reading tonight, Dan Raphael. <laughs> yeah, thanks to everyone for coming on this... Uh, December evening, or early December, <laughs> feels like it, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm just excited uh, about my book. I guess they said there's a, a Q&A thing afterwards, so I'm not one of those who tends to talk a lot between his poems. Uh, I might say a thing here or two, but uh, usually not. I mean, it's just a thing. Uh, a lot of words, sometimes things can happen kind of fast, but uh, my... The, the best model or excuse is Groucho Marx, because uh, you, you always worry when you laugh at one joke, you miss the next two, but it doesn't matter because there's still more coming. And that's kind of how this works. It's not like you're, you know, well, intentionality is not really an issue either, but here we go. And I just want to get the stuff out front. I, I all my poems are in the first person, uh, and that's, but it's not really me. It's the language coming out, or it's language coming through me, or whatever. But I just decided a long time ago that why stick these words in anybody else's mouth? I mean, I need to take responsibility for them. So that's why it's in first person. But it's not really. Well, yeah, okay. <laughs> Birthright. Born with a hangover. Born with a Jones, born with a hole in my palate, born allergic to dirt, wheat, and milk, born without parents of record, third generation welfare, my native language is daytime TV. <laughs> my allegiance is to the light slicing through these frames at 2 a.m., a diamond stillness when everyone else in the room stops breathing. I pluck a star and watch it shining ebon in the snow of my hand, melting to unity, the pulsing current of a pond's infinite edge. I throw away my glasses and accept my way of seeing. I let the money come in the mail. Utility is a balance of when to be in public and what never to share. The oldest trees that hold the most life are abandoned in disrepair to a more natural ventilation. That's why we can wear three coats at once, why bared flesh is a sign of submission. As God demands, we scrub away the earth's protection to be more vulnerable to infectious wrath. 
forgetting the inner body's thermostat of love that never comes to term. Inarticulate love, crepuscular love that dawns right before I pass out, climaxes just before I wake. I'm going to read the, the oldest poem in the book, and then we'll get into, yeah, move around. Oleo strut. And if you look in the dictionary, an oleo strut is a kind of landing gear for a plane that's filled with oil. But uh, I also knew somebody who walked like that. <laughs> Giant space bunnies from Saturn cover the earth with strawberry jam and eat it on toast. Stride don't slip, skin don't rip, fry don't flip, feel don't grip. Fist in sardo, fist in sardo, fingers yeast bubbles flung against the hound's memory. Could you hold this lava while I tie my boot? Rivers veins and compass sun where a cat's a weasel, cars transform to ten inch cubes. Us regular juxtaposers, a wind tumor and sun rot, tire shard shouldered, lap another cool one. Yoga of two leg stools and sprung chairs, wrist through pinball machine, beer through bladder. Mileage won't wash out. Takes a small stomach to eat moon. Irresistible trash whistling dogs into traffic. Yeah. And just moving ahead. Imagine we're living together in a condemned house in uh, central Seattle overlooking I-5 where it's about 13 miles wide. Lanes wide. It's, it's wide and there's lots of cars. First car I see tonight. <laughs> Discovering the 5 a.m. freeway rumbling airlessly over my head like a star cruiser Graceless is an erection in reverse, or a waterfall of legs and mutant parachutes, some of the rocks opening to grab, some collapsing like photophobic flash bulbs or paper bags allergic to glass. This highway has no neck to screw my face onto. Like bread dough, I'm spreading this reflexive German shepherd wide as a living room, folded up a couple times with phone books and rabbit ears. This highway's an adhesive tampon stuck to me in bleeding gasoline. All my lice bailing out and up as the rain refuses to touch its jagged teeth to my bones, dissolving by repeating the weather forecast in languages like muscatel, cleft palate. By the time I'm drugged enough with caffeine, sobriety, and food, the highway will be sleeping in the plaster. The blind pink wallpaper waiting like magnetic ectoplasm to use my shoulders as an aircraft carrier. Little tires on all my fingers and toes. My knees are bare ignition wires. My eyes have no high beam left. This no lead runs through me like generic beer. And my room is Huck Finn's raft on this river too lumpy with thousand dollar frogs. A 78 Volari is my razor. A 69 Vista Cruiser toasts my bread. Rambler ashtray surrounded by pink and yellow subcompacts carrying my bed through asphalt. I'm calm as secretaries on diet pills, running through rural shives, proclaiming the gospel of Iacocca. Blessed are the paved. And on the seventh day, he tuned up. Something of the energy of the streets. And the title kept changing on this, but all different. Letter from Pendleton, from Ypsilanti, from Port Rock. Someone takes the bone and runs, a whisper of corn. Someone takes the spaceship, removing the space within, trying to make the clouds smooth-skinned, green charred, difficult to look at, impossible to remember without a scary hand. Trying to make the scary hand remember open pits of giant insects, operating on same with scared as a coyote in traffic efficiency. A science built on that. 
a dance from random sampling, crouching for power, eating in thin, dense strips, eating a hundred miles with one hand, a hundred hands slapping like washcloths turned into aluminum kittens. Someone stops the news and knows we've forgotten and can't see through the two calligraphic and quick switch hitters. The end dusted worm tread as if, how much that cherry worth? Oh, he stop about every third day. They no mess him ara with just dip and bird ink geometrics, dodeca burrito, armadillo heart, where no high pine could hide. Every day here, like a newspaper on edge. Porpoise, slow through this sand, will pull a false history of stew, will shelve running into, running into himself. How many times these fluid hinges hang him up with how his knuckles terraform or perm? Can't count them, cause they're gone. Can't leave with both legs. Can't sing till you've loved the rock to sleep. Sleep bad for the knees and eloquence. More like an airplane that way. Gets funky, gets unexpected. Shows the light crack a near door or dust and crevice hungry net gone. Someone confronts his medulla and moves to a busy street corner. Someone confronts the earth and thinks the sky's a bowling ball, a picassic udder, a bacon and seeking all breakfast. I realize now that, that, that this title could be like a, a, a quiz on Facebook, but I missed it, you know. If, if you could be any tree, which one would you be? <laughs> when I see another body, I don't compare it to mine. I try to be invisible to myself. That's why I had to quit dance class. A wall of mirrors I'd escape by going into. <laughs> So little of our mental landscape is reflective. More like driving across Nebraska at night, where even a cloudy sky has more detail than the truckers' radio stations, blanketing dozens of states with redneck populism and commercially misguided mythology. But I don't even make it to Nebraska Street on my commute, on my air and shuffling. Given my limited routes, I could be a mole seeking only a pawful of tunnels. Would I stay at home or work the fringes of my range, trying to either extend my coverage or deepen where I go with secret rooms and tunnels that follow my delusional compass? To hug a tree so it remembers. Apple trees turned into fences, oaks into lightning rods, all the fruit trees cross-pollinating, as is my neighborhood, where a blip of thick gas excites the somnolent radar of xenophobia. We fear folks who aren't like the ones we have on TV, victims of stretch slacks, button flies, and t-shirts seeping into pores. I'm paid to explode my chest, wondering if my thigh should be steamed or barbecued. <laughs> Looking up to see the night plums unfurl their thirsty wings skyward, where walls grow from those within them. Carpentry is self-development a texture knowing what to forgive and what to incorporate, that a structure not danced in always collapses. And so we shall do a little dancing. One, two, three, one, two. <laughs> F waltz. Face, feces, focus, fish. Flush fascist, fascia, sift effervesce, sephiral, Stephanie ceramitis, reef surf freezer bag, referential elf, leaf femur shell fluoroscope, cafe inscape, souffle, hassan pfeffer foster child, fuzz, phloem, fire, fallible fur fallicle, flan semi rig phonic if, metaformed kef, Freak meat Aphrodite, morphine, oaf, carafe, freshet, ferret, foxy, false leaf, no daffodil, hormonica rich, few phaser, gift horse phage, feral oak, fabric bat, graffiti tree, feral dual heffalump scree, fellaheen mocha flake, livesome zip, 
spring foot toffee, mouth train fever, shingle fall rifle psych bowl, riffraff gallimaufry, poof, beefalo gall, semaphore cough, giraffe fragmenial wolf film flan, foreign furtive ferris y isle. And again, as, as was said, these poems go back, cover like a 26-year period, but working on old poems, you're always surprised by the things you complained about or talked about still haven't been fixed. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't they listening? Okay. <laughs> Waiting on the progress train. What's in it for me? Since I am the Earth, since all of my hope is a thin stream of genetic happenstance. All the places I remember, able to die back and blow away in some holocaustic wind of accumulated ignorance. We work so hard to extend science for profit and convenience. We need thicker and thicker lenses, helmets, knee pads, surrounding our sex organs with impenetrable etiquette of fear. We don't sing, we shoot. The trees are here for us, like a shoulder to vomit on. A guardian angel combining radar, computer, cell phone, and ATM, constricting utility belt to emphasize buttocks and minimize gut. <laughs> That's why I feel damn fine tonight. Fog so thick, I'm in a tiny bubble, flowing through space at 18 million miles an hour, yet feel no breeze, apprehension, or need to navigate. Are we here yet? <laughs> Will effervescent trumpets muddle us through the days of vampire capitalism? The slope gets so steep, my legs adjust to nose-bleeding altitude imbalance. With so much worthless information, why bother having hands? Work harder and harder to obsolesce the body's efficiency, to curl like bacon in a vacuum, to steep in tubs of e-dimensional fantasy, spiking my brains with a hemisphere of snowy needles. I keep exercising in a sphere of comprehensive anatomy, evaporating effort to an imploding point of white narcosis, stomach flowing like a river of unusual delights, Lymph glands work overtime, anticipating inspections by white-gloved corpuscles, unscrew the top of my head, and poise like naked parachutists on the brink of transformative chaos. Still waiting. Uh, it was mentioned we have a lot of plants in our house, and the one that puts on a good show or has uh, about a, a very old and unfortunately now dying cherry tree. But back in the day, one spring day, I was just going up the steps and the windows were just full of the blossoms. The cherry tree at the top of the stairs. As if it's spring in the lung, the angle of shadow, a blossom that can't be got out of. Sixteen of me, in a chain reaction crash, up the stairs. I want to go out the window and through the hole at the top of the cherry tree, where all the wishes of photosynthesis put down roots. And a glut of suns returning for an encore, a hot magnesium date, saga compressed to a month, an numerical religion, a mystery time can't corrode, just costume, a chorus of stamens, galaxy of irresistible bird's feet, stewed in spring, dried when the sun's on the rocks, rubbed into the genitals when preparation seems impossible, dancing to the strange light as if the sky unzipped. I want accident, not order, as if repetition leads to the exceptional, using everything but names. 
A sky so yellow one closes the shade or jumps without falling to claw my way into gluttony, letting nothing go to waste, terraforming my organs into microclimates rare and mundane, urban epiphytes, highway clogged with marsupials. The river's fluorescence is not a trick. The heart knows too much jazz to stop growing fingers, a scalp full of reeds running in every direction and into myself dancing on my own skull, belly stretched and dried, thigh with all the stops out. An organic cord, the cherry blossom runs through all its changes. An aria scat upon the tongue, rib I cocoon into arboretums of vital nutrients, neath the rain red as cherries yet to come, red as the breasts of stillborn birds, where the sky is the earth exposing itself in all directions to jumpstart the ennui of hibernation, to confuse the mower with more color than fashion can contain. I flow up from my roots, uncoil my shoulders, and blow through the hole at the top of the cherry tree, where all the wishes of photosynthesis go beyond and in through the molecular time signatures to sprout a new jazz deafening in its silence, hip irresistible spasms, co-mingling in decomposition, sprouting unthinkably green, alien, organic. The sun the way to new worlds, so we go past the middle, not stopping at solstice at equilibrium, marrying the arctic to the solar, the chakric void to electromagnetic profusion ripping time open to trees big as planets, planets small as cherry pits, people ripe as summer fruit fermenting in the sun of our mutual love. And yeah, so I want to uh, read one poem not in the book, which is the one on the broadside, which seems a good thing to do, but I hope the version I have is the same that you have, but you know how poems can be. And this was, and this was again, just looking out my window and, and I'm gonna say I saw it, but okay, on my street. A six inch man walking through a city of 12 foot doors. The music is sliced and pasted together so I can't make out a beat. How many different languages, or is the sound inside me? as if I'm buried in the street, reading the pressure waves against my extended flesh, hearing the mewling stars in a world where we can jump out of airplanes and usually survive. In our church, we become adults by having a rib removed, biting a fruit from a forgotten time or planet, and standing so close to another for half a day, our faces stick together and change. Give thanks for instant fire, for 2,000 songs in a pocket. My car will tell me when to turn. It's always summer in the produce section. <laughs> Today, I'm the doctor. Yesterday, I was the machine that fills the plastic bottles with water. Tomorrow morning, the bathroom will be in the other direction. I'll get out of bed and sink through the floor into a bus 10 seats wide. The clouds have been replaced with condominiums. Past the urban growth boundary. No, okay. No. <laughs> I guess, yeah, another poem that started looking out my window, coincidentally. Um, and, you know, I just saw some. People on the school across the street, and of course they had to be snipers. <laughs> they came all this way for shoes. No. Snipers on the school roof, chimneys of cotton candy. The light's been glaring, pent up between the wet earth and a sky too stuffed to jump for hours. Cars can't turn their lights off, and all the freeway exits exude another scent. Every car is old as its driver with big plans, lots of gas, a special shortcut only seeming to wallow in the 10-foot crest of topsoil and shredded bleach bottles. 
when everything yours is on four wheels with seven identical sets of work clothes. The color of my butane lighter changed when I sleep, my brand of coffee, how and when I ingest a lingering freezer jam. If the TV won't watch me, the mirror will. As if each insect deliberately placed here to make home an organic pyramid, the air never leaves the yard. This weekend, we'll cut clouds and stack them in the attic. Unannounced puffballs filling in for the V-dub had a family emergency at the auto recyclers. No cars allowed past Beaumont anyway. If you could afford the gas, you wouldn't be living here. <coughs> Dawn bus for the berry fields. A dump truck full of fluorescent carp is hijacked and flipped over between the bank and the federal building. 500 distributor caps stolen in one week. Black power boats with livery drivers. It's hard to find a truck stop not putting eggs in the coffee, but my home's not mine till tomorrow. I'm having my horoscope fumigated. I'm giving the furniture 24 hours to do what it wants. Scatters through time and history. At one point, when 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 the war was still going on in Sarajevo, I heard of the uh, can't write my own handwriting. Some people who were uh, performing John Lennon songs out in the streets. Sarajevo sings John Lennon. Now is so perilous. I have to go a ways before letting the light of myself out. To live in the now, which could end any moment, interrupted by any sound, hoping for an interruption. Each day so full of tense nothing. I cannot separate or name them, as if my nerves gain weight, able to walk through walls, been shattered long ago, afraid to fall or held up by our need to hide as the bathroom wall is always the first to go, like the wall that keeps my meanness inside, so sensitive to inattention. When the middle lane's only choices are neither left nor right, forward nor backward, up nor down, why can't I be one of those soft sculptures in traffic, in windows lit for night, or those decoy homes no one lives in, radiating comfort and love? Because I have to cross traffic like sniper fire, garrote in thin air, an AIDS lottery you pay to not play. When I still haven't found steps around this bonfire's perimeter, how can I go out? How can I get to the next hour? One more gelatin windshield collecting my face, one more rib cage open like a peach with thumbs on both sides, taking my place and knowing what to do with no memory of why or since when. In this total uncertainty, the only growth is letting gravity win big, evaporating and rapidly composting auras. The station wagon groceries only go in but must be fed so we can get somewhere. How many strings severed to stay here so here we'll be reversing to hold instead of springing from? Juggling hoops of soil and water, knowing the microclimates deep within me so I can lead them out then bring geography to my open knees. The normally dressed one who breaks into rhythmic epilepsy, headphoneless, tuned to some else, can any bullet hit someone who is dances that way? I got my start in poetry uh, hanging out at coffee houses when I was in high school and re reciting stuff by the Beats and St. Lawrence and Yevtushenko and so I guess this had to come out eventually. In my vision, there is no America but the America between us. My gut extends from the Rockies to the Appalachians. 
My hands are Maine and Florida. My heart is New York City. My balls are Denver with one toe in Canada, the other in Mexico. I have seen America implode into houses, apartments, rooms, sucking the atmosphere clean with force too addicted to cars, billboards, neon fast food bags. When no one is on the strip, do the hamburgers still sizzle? More perception than food, the package coats the baby. The substance satisfies and focuses hunger, defining with fewer words a leap of repetition. I sit in a whirlpool of sweat, old clothes, flying skin, yeasting gut grown toward light, faded by obsessive multiplication. Because as numbers get higher, as mankind gets denser, rules change. Space opens up, more becomes less, signatures become velocities. I have seen myself spiral down, expanding as I approach the speed of awareness into the dissolution of stillness, illness, silliness, silence. How the gaps between soundproof homes where the information seeps in is invited in, paid to overpower the inner voices. America is many theories, speculations, altered nerves, good intentions. America is a loose aggregate of personal shortcomings, drifting in beyond the heart, taken into the estuary of recycled emotions, nerve force surreptitiously unloaded neath rivers and hills, so thinly disguised, not even a novice bartender would follow them to the restroom. <laughs> our youth is in our legs. Our responsibility is in our stomach. Ribs of steel, buns of steel, my muscles so ripped an artistic bulldozer is suspected. I'm waiting for the smog to clear and reveal America at least to thin so I can make out America's bulk, creating its own horizons. America is the world. America is what it eats, world treading in its own gravy. I guess I would say one of my peons, you might have noticed his, his imagination. And uh, this next, poem sounds like somebody, you know, flicking through 400 satellite channels, but I don't watch TV and I've never been hooked up to any of that. Or at least my TV set has not No. So yeah, this is what the mind put out, but I did watch TV as a kid. Sleeping with our eyes open. He fires his pistol twice in the air, scattering all six horses out of range. As an overwide comet shreds the sky, a hand reaches into the cupboard and pulls out a wad of dough in front of an abandoned factory, many generals with hands on their hearts, hands swinging in tall sunlit glass, clumsily placing a cocktail onto a table, sees her reflection in the polished wood as the whip caresses the sedan's roofline. A hammered gong showers party-colored rice onto smiling families leaping through station wagons like otters. Flash bulbs underneath a helicopter blade. A beach with several dozen ragged corpses. In the background, a flaming pyre goes black when the lighter clicks, a pack of cannabis, grins between the fingers made by luxury vacation condos. The red Porsche rolls over three times and decapitates a fire hydrant. A policewoman runs out of the car as the driver says a prayer. Steel security shutters crawl to a close over the face of a young model with no background. He looks apprehensive as a black and white shaver comes out of the sewer tunnel. As the eyes move deeper into darkness, a pot-bellied man streaks across the desert sky into the target drone. White smoke of giant microwave popcorn. A swarm of lasers alphabetize runes onto elliptical wood. Mom slides the bowl in front of us, smiling as the papers crumple in her fist. She walks around the table to the witness stand. 
inflatable pig emerges from the keyhole. In the shadows of Wall Street, thunderheads roll over palm trees. And a white ziggurat with glinting green windows zips around a hairpin turn into dusklit foothills. One high-performance bathtub floats over an advancing tide of used motor oil, dissolving honest nouns. His beard is past his knees. The motorcycle lifts off from the road, smooth and powerful. The city hums with prosperity, slows with porch lights and golden living rooms where families tell their computers what they did. <laughs> Fred Astaire, tapping in an electronic matchbox, reloads as the water barrel above him is punctured, as the cameraman is plowed into the world faster than focus. She can see for the first time, and her face is conflicted between expectation and reality. The pony gallops into an abandoned coal mine, while a boy on crutches struggles after him. Tearful and anxious, the huge canvas sails with spaghetti stains, ground in dirt and freshly washed newsprint. She lifts the t-shirt over her face, and the screen gets fuzzy with testimony two hands and a mouth, playing harmonica at night before the mobile home dawns into a watermelon split open on the asphalt where a family of bears chooses six numbers for the lottery. <laughs> Brisk dark hands push a white shirted back against the gleaming window of postmodern architecture where someone spray painted, don't hate me because I'm beautiful. A dinosaur in printed bedsheet turns into a credit card and shows the two children their future prosperity. And, uh, I'll wrap up with the last poem from the book. The first poem in the book was the one on the Oregonian, but I didn't read that. Because, you know, I can't read all the ones all the time. but. And thanks to everyone for coming here. <sighs> Pound of head. When what was my head pounds incessantly, skull my fat has grown to burst like pants in the sky, heaving against the seams of habit, expectation, caffeine, deep fried salt. I pull another paycheck shirt over the mucus bubble, enshrines my head beneath the red, white, and blue strobes of Christian police carving crosses into bullet tips. Beneath, pet puts silver mascara and typo lip polish across their war masks. Over psych shoppers storm the mall's flypaper windows. Discounts with credit cards. Discounts to blood donors. No condom users allowed. Keep touching everything that moves. Keep moving against the tide of reptilian hands. Anesthetizing light with elevator music. Spreads like floodwaters to wax our ears sullen, soporific, a tingle with multiple piercings. This chronic release of ions slowly transforms the iron in our blood works the cracks in elemental pavements so the weeds grow downward into caverns rich with landfill and forgotten cities we wear as hats tightening our crabgrass hair. No showers of the Azanon or Roundup, no deodorants applied with paint rollers to hold in the sweat, to exude no animal scent, to bulge the eyes like primetime velvet paintings animated for sex. No body could afford to find herself like a butterfly, chloroformed, bound, rasterized, and jingling free in the internet of supermarket ventilation. The rise of video tuberculosis. <laughs> They're afraid to call it consumption. Like you never hear of an American flu, an upper class virus. All, all diseases come from deficiencies, from disruptions or inadequacies in the ease we slather on like latex meat salad. Tween bread, nutritious as wallboard, bread that will outlive us. <laughs> I have my lover search every inch of me for the freshness date, a, bar, a barcode to drag across my tombstone's eye. Our alphabets have gone pan-cultural a remote control embedded in the thigh, a TV that knows your name and reminds you to attune your heart to the electronic pulpit. 
the silicon pituitary, a thousand pieces of data. How many can you link to what clothes in which club through today's freshest doors high below the city? We tried to fly on top of elevator shafts clogged with multimedia cholesterol to buy, to lose your hand in, to not come home shivering with amputated dreams. Dreams where I'm falling, spreading, as vats of unbaked wonder bread pour into the sea, untouched by fish, corroding the drift nets, making the sea safe for subdivision. <laughs> the water will be our new ozone layer. Taste it with your eyes. Smell is taboo. Smell prevents overcrowding. Nothing gets through these plaster walls. Who is feeding from the Stairmaster's life cycles, commuting across illusory asphalt cities with nothing between but dwindling farmland, swapping clothes, body parts, genetic codices, where should become shat under what circumstance? If who was when did what against memory, silently corroding through the spine's escape route and anti-tide of dehydrated rodent scuzz recalls like a slow razor-sharp pendulum. No matter how deep the breath, how dark the tea, how free the honey of neurotoxins, I wind up better ventilated and less mobile, smiling more than I realize, scared more than I want, struggling a little less, thinking the ropes will age before I do but my sinews keep chewing at themselves. My teeth chatter into electricity, shrink wrapping the earth, learning to pucker, but no one to kiss, whistling in ways the dogs no longer care to hear. Hungry and frustrated? Make a baby. Lonely? Have a baby. Yearn for the stability of your past? Be a baby. <laughs> The baby, your replacement, your knight, your surrogate. Don't bogart that baby. What else is there to smoke? How else can we cut through the fog we can't extinguish? Can't ask who's hoarding wood, who's pissing gasoline, siphoned from our savings accounts, whose service fee is greater than the interest rate, because the banks are doing us favors. We should be thankful for these jobs. The burgers made from test tube cows continually rebirthing in jungles no one notices except the satellites, constantly edited and directed. Satellites shed no tears. Satellites remember only from the outside, pulling the earth up to them. That's why we need bigger, heavier shoes to counteract the pull of space. The urge for fight heightened by the systemic strictures on fighting. Fight the mirror, fight the power, fight the enemies of Jesus, the enemies of the American way, one of whom is me. <laughs> the American way is a manhole cover called depression. In our food, in the things we cannot be, yearn to burn, want more better, want more better, want you so badly, so haphazardly, ooh. <laughs> Anyone can be a record. Necessary rags to riches, Necessary lotteries, crashing symbols of hope, answering the $64,000 question. I want to be put in jeopardy. I want to solve the missing letters and bend over and spread them. Don't tax the rich, because someday you might get there. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. No one's laughing. The rich don't laugh when they don't see. When the rich take off their wallets, they're invisible. Value is what someone will pay to take what you have, to climb your spine, skin on the wall, face in the jar, etched into stone, frozen till technology gets further ahead of flesh. The firmware within us, only eons of spiritual practice can re-etch the alm of DNA, rosary of historical mistakes. We are killed by overburdened hearts, hearts unable to forget. We are killed by cells gone awry, growth without definition or purpose. We are not killed by natural time. We are not killed by justice. Thanks for coming.
So what happens now, boss? Questions and answers. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, so my first question is... <laughs> okay, I'll 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 do that. Okay, okay. <laughs> 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 okay. No, I would not join the club. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I'm, yeah. Well, you've been writing a long time. So what, what's your practice, your writing practice? Do you write at a set time? No. Regularly? It's all pretty much spontaneous. Uh, I just, I just hope it happens, you know, sometimes in the morning, sometimes at night. I've written a fair amount of poems after movies or even like at poetry readings or events because it's like the, uh, you know, I think the main barrier to being creative is the everyday life we have, all the worries and all the other stuff going on. And, you know, in a way, if you can get up and first thing have a mind first the way, you know, William Stafford used to do and get those best moments, maybe that'll work for you. But for me, it's like, you know, I go to a movie and I get out of the crap of every day, and on the way back, I catch some, some poetry. I mean, it might have a little tinge of the movie with it, but it's not about that. I mean, it's about whatever, whatever it's about. Uh, you know, my, uh, I keep saying this because it's about all I got, but my, uh, my one aesthetic principle is language knows more than I do. So, so in a way, once it comes out, I, I kind of want to get out of the way. I mean, obviously, language can't type, so it needs me for something. <laughs> but, uh, you know, so there's that odd relationship. And then just trying to, you know, because uh, even though the work is fairly spontaneous when it happens, I do spend a lot of time hacking on it, uh, working on it. Sometimes more comes. Uh, sometimes I realize I got too off on a tangent and lost what I had. Uh, I, I do uh, pretty soon along in the process read the poem out loud. Uh, the sound and the, and the rhythm is an important part of uh, keeping it together. So something like that. Yeah. Where did you grow up? Uh, I, I grew up in Pittsburgh. Uh, kind of my attraction to poetry was like, you know, my, uh, my mom. Happy birthday, Mom. OK. I, I was going to say it at the beginning, but I forgot. OK. Um, you know, quit school at, uh, after sixth grade because you were allowed then, and she had to work because I uh, had a lot of siblings. And uh, she, she was first generation American. Uh, my real last name is Dwogoinski, which if you uh, translate it from the Polish, means son of the tall guy. <laughs> <laughs> it does. And. Um, yeah, and uh, so, so, you know, my, my mom quit school in sixth grade. My dad got kicked out of high school his junior year for beating up the prefect of discipline. And uh, so, so, so it wasn't a real intellectual house. But, you know, the fact that then I started writing poetry just seemed really magical and special to me, you know, because, you know, I'm just a ghetto kid from this sort of area. But, and so that's kind of kept me going. Uh, that sort of background just because it shouldn't be happening, and it was. So, who, yep. who were your teachers in poetry? I mean, I can almost hear them. Well, I mean, there are teachers and there are teachers, I guess. But, uh, you know, obviously a, a lot goes back to, to Whitman, and then as it came through, uh, through the Beats and other people, I, I, I read widely. I have a, a, a bachelor from Cornell. I have an MFA from Bowling Green and a Master of Arts in Literature from Western Washington. Uh, and, uh, you know, some of my poetry teachers, Robert Morgan, who's better known as a novelist now, and uh, A.R. Ammons, uh, an important teacher to me, was Ray De Palma, who you'd never heard of, but he uh, opened up, me up to a lot of writings I hadn't heard about, like the New York School language poetry, Gertrude Stein, things like that. So, uh, and then it's just kind of catch it from there. But, yeah. Yeah. So I'm curious, um, it sounds like you've been very involved in the literary scene here in Portland for a number of years. Yeah. Publishing people. Publishing and doing readings. Have you also been uh, teaching as a livelihood? No, no. Uh, I tried teaching. I went back for my second master's, hoping to get out and you know get some fresh teaching experience. But that was 
the last big recession in the early 80s, so I never had good timing. I've been working for the DMV for over 25 years, <laughs> uh, the Department of Mental Vacations. <laughs> uh, and, uh, so, you know, it, it kind of <laughs> doesn't, you know, you don't have to bring it home and uh, things like that. And you, and, and, and you meet all kind of interesting people. I mean, the whole world. I worked in the Lake Oswego DMV for a good while, and now I'm at uh, the one on 82nd in Hancock. We call it the uh, United Nations of the DMV. <laughs> but and, and it's great, and it's great, you know. And if, if only f for people's names, you know. Like, there is a person living in Oregon whose name is Tarzan. First name Tar, last name Zan. He's from Burma. Uh, if, if you ever meet Tom Slaughter, who's a big guy, lives in Gresham, his real first name is Tomato, but everybody calls him Tommy, you know? And, and things like that. We had Miss Black America, in, and that's what it said on our birth certificate from about 42 years ago. So, you know, I mean, who needs poetry when you got names like that? But, but, but yeah, it's just, you know, I'm, I'm just the kind of person who wants you, I mean, I'm just stubborn about things. I'm, I'm, I'm good at building habits. You know, I had the same job. I've, I've had the same wonderful wife for a long time in the same house. And I've been writing poetry for a long time. And it just, uh, fortunately, keeps happening and I keep trying. You know, I'm kind of, the last two years I did a, a weekly reading series in conjunction with the St. John's Farmer's Market. And, uh, yeah, and Portland was kind of a, a, a one-time event. It would have been nice to repeat it, and, but the person I was working with actually got the, the, the mayor at the time. Uh, f for that day, the name of the city was changed to Poetland. Yeah, we had a false, false history. You don't just change one letter, right? I mean, that's, you know, so it has to be true. And, uh, you know, and then the publishing thing, uh, doing the, uh, you know, some of the people in the 26 book series were Lisa Stein and Jim Chagru, our current uh, poet laureate, Paul Ann Peterson, and you know, so uh, a number and, and wide range of people. So uh, just, and I don't know what's going to be next, because uh, you know, the uh, St. John series happened at uh, St. John's Booksellers, and it looks like they might not be around much longer. So you know, but but do support your local bookstores and your local libraries, okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, and I'm just going to close with a, a, a political library poem, just because we have library supporters here. Alex Alexandria. If Rupert Murdoch believes something, if Wall Street wants to roll one-sided dice, Congress and our Parliament will sing harmony. If science and history are on sale, what about all other non-experiential truths? Just cause it's on TV, on the web, in a newspaper. How did it get there? Do everything you can to save the libraries full of books. You can't change books. You have to burn them. Yeah. Very good.